Hello there, welcome to episode 30 of Nevermind the Bullens, your bite-sized Everton podcast and vodcast. My name's Mike Peters, I hope you're doing alright. After the uh, Carabao Cup quarter-final defeat to Manchester United, uh, obviously I sound as deflated probably as you are as listening to this or watching this. Uh, if you're watching the vodcast, uh, yet again I've uh, broken out the uh, seasonal attire, got the hat on, uh, got the uh, glass of wine, which frankly I need to get through that at times, that was... Uh, difficult to watch but you know let's be fair um no complaints about the result united were the better team on the night i mean they really should have been out of sight in the first half an hour because we started absolutely appallingly i mean i've talked many times on this podcast about starting games slowly and that was one of the worst starts to a game you could possibly imagine we were all over the place uh, for the first half an hour, I mean, somebody should have uh, told the team, particularly the back five, that they, uh, you know, that you're supposed to drink uh, at the Christmas party after the game. You know, if the Winslow was open, I would have expected them to have all been in there before the game. That would have been the only reasonable excuse for a, a sort of a start to a game as bad as that. They were absolutely all over the show, but we grew into the game. Um, but really. Our best period was the was that last 15 minutes of the first half where, you know, we looked like we were going to do something. We looked like we might score and, and create something. And I just wondered, I thought, you know, when you've ridden your look like that, it's the old thing of, you know, teams don't take their chance in the first half an hour. We've been guilty of it on many a time down the years. As every potential football club you could ever sort of get into your head thinking, start a game like that, like a train thing, it should have been out of sight and they end up losing it. And I thought, I wonder, United start like that, we somehow ride our luck and get away from that. And then end up winning the game by a goal to nil, sneaking a goal somewhere. But hey, it wasn't to be. No complaints about the result. United were the better team. They had um, you know far more possession. Uh, they had the better chances, uh, even in the second half. And um, you know they absolutely deserved to to win the game. It's it's massively disappointing um, because I, I just felt the planets were kind of aligning for us. In this competition, Brentford winning last night. Yep, City obviously beating Arsenal. Uh, all right, Tottenham. It wasn't going to be an easy route to win the competition, but I just thought, I just wonder if this is this is our year. Um, obviously, it's not going to be certainly in this competition anyway. Um, but you know, United absolutely deserved the win, no question about it. Um, whether Edison Edison Cavani should have been on the pitch to score, well. I, there's no he shouldn't I think in these VAR uh, driven times that um, grab round throat um, on on Yerry Mina by any de- definition lately uh, you know we've seen players sent off for the same thing but, I mean Granite Jacker was sent off for Arsenal not a week or so ago and we're doing the exact same thing against Burnley and he managed to get away with that Andy Madley seemed to see it um, but didn't do anything about it now you know that's that's disappointing. There, there was the competition. We have to live with that. But he's got away with Don, one there, and but he showed his quality. No question about it. That as soon as he got the ball, I thought, uh, uh, this is in the back of the net, and within you know blink of an eye, there it was flying past Robin Olsen. Um, must make mention of him because I thought his performance in terms of commanding and, and, and dominating, saying I want the ball at times it needs it needs to improve. He's only played three games. I, I grant that, but this is um, an international goalkeeper. Um, an experienced international goalkeeper who's played for you know big clubs in Europe in terms of obviously we signing from Roma you know a big club I'm thinking you've got to want to ball, want the ball more than that and you could see it sense the defence at times going come on lads you know come and claim it you know dominate your your box um, it was great to see Seamus Coleman back in the back in the team tonight um, and, and hopefully obviously he'll have a big part to play over the festive period when uh, games are coming thick and fast. Um, but I've got to make mention of Alex Owo because I, I just watched him and again, and he's been a, a regular <laughs> component of these podcasts over the last uh, six months. And I, I just wonder, is it is he capable of beating a man? I've been quite positive about him lately because his performance levels have improved. But tonight, he was really, really disappointing. You know, every time he, he, he sort of... It was, like, it was like me trying to run the hurdles at school. It was like, I didn't want to do the hurdles, so I just ran into him. And it's literally, oh, well, I've missed the chance. Oh, no. But he would do that with to all the United defenders. Anybody he came across, he just didn't look like he had any confidence in his own ability to go around the back of a man and get past him. Um, and I'm just, uh, you know, that was a chance for him tonight. A massive opportunity for him to really drive the team, drive 
the attacking force of the team and he completely failed to take it. Uh, Andre Gomez uh, as well, very disappointing performance. I, I, I do wonder with him now whether he's ever going to achieve or, or get back to those levels that we saw from him in the first uh, season that he was with the club where he looked like you know I just thought you know I regularly describe him to people as a Rolls Royce of a footballer uh, but now he looks more like a Robin Reliant there's no question about it he's you know maybe that's a slightly extreme and flippant comparison but he's nowhere near the levels that he that he's been at now I know obviously he's had a, a very very bad injury um, but it, it just seems to me that we can't find a way of incorporating into the team without him be, to enable him to be at his best that doesn't involve it just a gana gay and the bottom line is he's not going to play in a two because we can't trust him to play in a two when he was asked to play in a two last season he couldn't do it and you know gana wasn't there but you still expect him to perform at the levels and he just wasn't he was off the pace his passing was poor and all the rest of it and nothing has really changed he's been given ample opportunity so far this season you know to be in that midfield three with Alan and Abdullah Decore, uh, and he's just not done it at all. Just not done it, and I, I just wonder whether we get to the summer and we may have to cut our losses with him. You know, I can I absolutely see a scenario where where he goes out on loan in January, depending on the players that we potentially bring in, because you know, opening the transfer window is a matter of days away now. Um, I don't don't think he's going to go out, but. The, Depending on what happens, I think it's it's unlikely rather than likely. But you know, I desperately want to see him succeed because I think he's a fabulous player. But he's just not doing it. And how long do you persist with players that aren't performing at any sort of level? Um, hopefully, the bigger thing tonight, really, you know, the defeat defeat is disappointing. But hey, let's you know put it in context and we got to a quarter final again, as we did last year, where we came from two goals down to to draw at Leicester and then ultimately went out on penalties. Um, you know, got the chance to obviously we're in a great position in the league. Uh, you know, a point off off second. Obviously, United have gone ahead of us after that one pin of leads they gave them on on Sunday. So it's all there for us over the festive period. But I think you know tonight showed in terms of the players that United brought off the bench: Rashford, Martial, quality players. And um, we're bringing Tom Davis on. Who I thought you know did a good job, and it was the right change. Tosin and Bernard, Rashalas, and you're thinking, oh no. You know, Richarlison, hopefully he's not out for any particular period of time and he's not got a concussion, which is going to put him out for a couple of weeks as is the rules nowadays. And obviously concussion protocols coming in. But you're just thinking, oh, just we're not we're not changing like for like here. Not that I have any problem with Bernard, but he is a massive step down to the, what Richarlison gives us in that position. So hopefully... You know, this isn't going to impact us too badly over the course of the next uh, couple of league games. Uh, obviously, great to see that Liverpool have stayed in Tier 2, which means fans can continue to go to the games. And I am fingers crossed, praying, I'm crossing everything that doesn't change uh, over the Christmas period because I've got a ticket for the West Ham game on New Year's Day. And I am desperate to get back in because it'll be 10 months to the day, I think, since the uh, United game, which is the last game we had at Goodison before lockdown with fans. So for me, I am absolutely, I was like a kid well two days from now a matter of hours from now as you probably listen or watch this uh, you know on Christmas get the, with the idea of getting back into Goodison I cannot wait I'm desperate that that doesn't change but you know we go into Christmas really good position in the league it's disappointing that we're knocked out of the Carabao Cup but we still got the FA Cup to come Rotherham uh, in a couple of weeks time and so we have to take you know learn our lessons from this and hopefully take them and think actually when we get our chances we just we don't kind of I would say we bottled it but we didn't perform at the level that we have done over the last few games tonight we weren't anywhere near uh, what we are capable of and that was that was the biggest disappointment so fair play to United they deserve to be in uh, the last four of the cup we didn't deserve anything tonight so uh, until episode 31 which will probably be an amalgam of the Sheffield United game and the Man City game. Uh, after the City game, obviously, uh, next Monday, the 28th, I say to you, season's greetings, Merry Christmas, and come on, you Blues. <laughs>